Thank you very much indeed to Jim and to Joe. That last piece sets us up for our scripture reading tonight because we're coming to a woman who was in great bondage. And God wants to speak to us through her tonight. And you'll find her in the Gospel of Luke chapter 13. The Gospel of Luke chapter 13. And we're commencing our scripture reading tonight from verse 10. Luke 13 and verse 10. And he, the Lord Jesus, was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity eighteen years, and was bowed together, and could in no ways lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him, and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation, because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day, and said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to work. In them therefore come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite! You know, the Lord wasn't afraid to give him his pedigree. The Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound low these eighteen years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day and And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed, and all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. And we know that the Lord will add his blessing to the reading of his own precious truth tonight. Who tonight amongst us knows somebody that doesn't have a need. Who amongst us tonight knows somebody who who doesn't have a problem? Because the reality is this evening, there's not one person who I know, and perhaps there's nobody that you know that doesn't have some sort of problem or some sort of need. My mother always says that if everybody threw their problems onto the table, the problem you take home with you will be your own problem, because everybody has some problem, and every pro- everybody has some need. But do you know the sad reality tonight is this? So many people live with problems, and so many people live with needs tonight, believing, believing that there is no answer for them. So many people tonight are carrying burdens, living with problems, experiencing great needs tonight, and yet they believe there is no answer for them. In the Gospel of Luke chapter 13 tonight, we come to a very moving story, a story of a woman with a great problem, a story tonight of a woman with a great need. And here's a woman who had this problem for 18 years, a woman this evening that lived in torment for 18 long years. And for this woman tonight, I'm sure she lived her life believing there was no hope. 
live in her life believing that there was no answer. But there's one thing she did believe in. She believed in her place of worship. She believed in her religion. Because when you get to verse number 10, you'll find that this woman with a great problem and a great need was found in the synagogue. But the sad story of the synagogue was the synagogue had no answer for her problem. The synagogue and her religion couldn't meet her at her need. You know, friends, this evening, there's many in the kingdom of Mourn tonight who believe in their place of worship, who believe tonight in their, in their church, who, like this woman tonight, believes in their rituals, who believes in all the sacraments. But tonight, they're not the answer for the great problem. I want you to notice this woman tonight who had a great problem and she found here this evening, she's found in the synagogue and here tonight she's found in the place of worship where there's no answer. You know the first thing we want to say about this woman tonight? Number one, there's the condition of the woman. The Bible says in verse 11 that she had this spirit of infirmity for 18 years and she couldn't lift herself up. You see, here's a woman tonight and there was nothing that she could do to free herself from the great problem. Because of the problem that this woman had, she couldn't live properly. She couldn't enjoy life. She couldn't walk properly because her life for 18 years was a life of torment. I want you to think about this woman tonight because for 18 years, every day was a nightmare. Every day was a nightmare for this woman for 18 years. Because of her problem and because of her need, she couldn't walk properly. She couldn't live properly the way that she should have. You know, friends, this evening, hope was beyond this woman's imagination. She thought there was no answer. She believed that there was no answer. And even though she thought there was no answer, yet she was at the place of worship. She still wanted to be there. But I want you to notice the condition of this woman. This woman had a terrible need. This woman had a terrible problem. You know, this woman in Luke chapter 13 is the picture tonight of every sinner. Because you see, every person born into this world has a registration number stamped upon their heart. Every person is born into this world with a registration number stamped upon their heart. And it's not Protestant. And it's not Catholic. It's not Muslim. It's not good. It's not bad. This is the registration number that is stamped on every heart that is born into this world. It's Romans 3, verse 23. Because the Bible says we all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. You see, this woman in Luke chapter 13 tonight had a problem that was beyond human control. It was a problem that religion couldn't do anything for her. And you know, friends, this evening, sin is the very same thing. Sin tonight is beyond any human help. Sin is beyond any uh, religious affair this evening that can, have, that can help you. Religion can do nothing for sin. Church can do nothing for sin. And I hope tonight 
that if you're in this meeting and you're not saved, that you can see the condition of this woman as your condition. But then the second thing I want you to see in this story tonight is not just concerning the condition of the woman, but look at the compassion upon the woman. Because we read there, and when Jesus saw her. Oh, I love that we phrase, you know. And when Jesus saw her. You see, here this woman was in a religious place, packed with religious people, but nobody saw her the way he saw her. In other words, they looked on her as a problem, as a person perhaps that they didn't want to be sitting there. Because the way she stood, because the way she walked, because the way she lived, perhaps to them she was an embarrassment. And do you know, friends, this evening, the Lord Jesus doesn't look on any broken sinner as an embarrassment. I love that little phrase, and when Jesus saw her, you know, friend, this evening, when the Lord Jesus looked at her, not only did the Lord Jesus see her, do you know what she did? She touched his heart. She touched his heart. You know, friend, tonight, the Lord Jesus, you touch his heart. You do. I'll tell you something now, friends, and you get this, please get this. Religion cares for nobody. People pay big money for religion. Religion doesn't do anything for you. Do you remember the man, the blind man in John's Gospel, chapter 9? How the Lord Jesus gave him his sight. And you remember he went into the temple and the people asked him, how were thine eyes opened? And he said, a man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed mine eyes and told me to go and wash in the pool of Siloam. You know, friend, do you know what happened? That caused a whole rumpus in the temple. In fact, when you read through John chapter 9, you'll see that the leaders of the temple, they fired him out into the street. They didn't want him anymore. You see, that's really what religion does to you. Religion doesn't want you. You remember the man in Acts chapter 3, for instance. The man who with the palsy, who, who was lame from his feet, from the day he was born, he was, he was at the beautiful gate of the temple and they walked in and they walked out and they didn't give two hoots about the wee fella. Ah, but you see, that's what religion does for you. You see, religion doesn't want anything to do with people who can do nothing for themselves, you know. And that's the sad thing. You remember the man at, who was it by the pool of Bethsaida? You remember that was a religious affair. Who, and, uh, and every time the angel came and touched the water, the, uh, whoever was first in got healed. This fellow here was, the fellow there was there for 38 years. Not one cared about him, but the Lord cared about him. And the Lord cared about the man in John 9 because the Lord met him when they fired him out onto the street. You know what the Lord Jesus says tonight? When nobody else wants you, when nobody else can do anything for you, I want you. He says, I want you. He says, I want to do for you what nobody else can do. I love you. I care for you. And you know, we read these lovely words, and when Jesus saw the woman, you know, that's the good news of the gospel tonight. Jesus cares. How do I know he cares? Because Calvary's cross proves that he cares. He left the realms of glory, knowing his destiny for the lowly hill of Golgotha, there to lay down his life for me. 
And it doesn't matter how sinful and how wicked and how evil and how broken we are. I'll tell you, Jesus cares. And Jesus cares like nobody else. Did you see the compassion upon the woman? There's the condition of the woman. There's the compassion upon the woman. Look at the conversation with the woman. Verse 12, And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. I want you to notice. Did you notice? It's all a one-way conversation. The Lord Jesus does all the talking. She does all the listening. Do you know something tonight? Here's a wee thought. She went to the temple not seeking for the Lord Jesus. She went to the temple not seeking for an answer because she believed there was no answer. But even though she went to the temple not looking for the Savior, I'll tell you something now, the Savior was there looking for her. Maybe there's some of you in this meeting tonight, I don't know. You have no intention of, of coming to the Lord or looking for the Lord. I'll tell you how it all happened with me. I had no intention of looking for the Lord. I, I didn't care. I didn't know anything about him. I wanted to know anything about him. And I'll tell you where he came and looked for me. He came and found me in a bar stool. The Lord came looking for me in a bar stool in Ivan Corns' pub. That's where he came looking for me. You know, friends, the Lord can meet you any road. I wasn't looking for him, but I'll tell you, friend, he was looking for me. And I'll tell you, friend, he's looking for you tonight. He's looking for you. Come here. He says to the woman, he says to the woman, be thou loosed from thine infirmity. That must have been music to her ears. That must have been the sweetest news that she ever heard. This is something she thought she would never hear. Woman, be loosed from thine infirmity. You know what the Lord Jesus is saying to you tonight? Look unto me and be ye saved. I will forgive you. I will save you. I will have you. I will take you. And I will give you eternal life. If you're in this meeting tonight, and that's not music to your ears, I'll tell you the devil is you well blinded. Listen to the conversation again, woman. Thou art loosed from thine infirmity. That was so sure, you know, thou art loosed. It was something to be believed. It was something that she could be sure of. Do you know what I don't see in this word? I don't see where this woman questioned the Lord. I don't see this woman saying to the Lord Jesus, are you taking a hand out of me? I've been bent over for these last 18 years and you're telling me that I'm loosed? She just believed. She just believed his word. That's all you've got to do tonight. Stop trying to understand it. Stop trying to work it out in your head. Listen, just believe in your heart tonight. Just believe his word. That's what it's all about. Just believe in his word. And that's what she did. She trusted his word. Do you see the story tonight? The condition of the woman. The compassion upon the woman. The conversation with the woman. Ah, but look at the change within the woman. Because we read in verse 13, and immediately she was made straight. You know the first song this woman could have sung was, What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. 
I'll tell you, there's nobody can change the life they can. I ain't going to put a wee record straight, listen to me. It's not religion you need at all. It's Christ you need. Religion, and I keep preaching this, religion has driven more people into the fires of hell than any other thing. Christ is the answer for the sin problem. And it's Christ you need to need. A number of weeks ago, we had big Charlie Weir in this pulpit, and I'll tell you, it was a miracle that night for me to see him in this pulpit, for it's something I thought I would never see. Charlie Weir, giving us testimony. He used to come in and call me all the names of the day. You know what he used to say to me behind the trade counter? Oh, there's Big Jordy. Big Jordy goes about preaching the weekend, and he's cleaning us poor farmers throughout the week. That's what he used to tell me, with a load of other words that I'll not pronounce. But you know, Charlie Weir is a changed man. Why? Because Christ made the change in his life. And he can make the change in your life. Because that's the change Jesus brings. I'm telling you now. Remember we said Murray. Some of you remember Sid Murray. Remember Sid Murray, James? We said from Belfast. We said it a wee saying. From drinking fags to ham and eggs. From a Johnny Walker to a gospel talker. From handcuffs to white cuffs. And from King Billy on my chest to King Jesus in my heart. You see, if any man's in Christ, what the Bible says, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. All things become new. I'll tell you, Satan, Satan bent this woman, but Jesus straightened her. He not only saved her, he straightened her. I remember on the church wall, and the night I was saved, there's a wee poster on the wall that says, drink buckles your brains, but Jesus straightens them. That's true. I mean, the wee woman in Lane Grove that I led to the Lord, she was led to the Lord when she was drunk. But that night she was stone, stone sober, cold, and the following Tuesday night she was well saved. But she died in a month later. I'll tell you, Satan, as we read, banter, but Jesus straightened her. You see, the Lord not only saves you, he straightens you. My goodness me, he straightens a case and him a tax collector, and that's a miracle on its own, straightening out a tax man. That's the change within the woman. But look at the conduct from the woman she glorified God. You know, that's what every saved sinner does. You know, you glorify God. So you want to show others of the wonderful change that he made. You know, this woman, the seed, then glorified God because of the change of the Lord Jesus. Because of the release of the Lord Jesus. And friend, tonight, it is no secret what God can do, what he's done for others. He'll do for you. And this woman, even though she was bent for 18 years, she was blessed throughout the rest of her life. And even though tonight she was in bondage, the rest of her life was a blessing. Because of him. He, ca he called her to him. Called you tonight. To him. And he'll make a change in your life. And he'll take away that burden of sin. That shackle of sin that has you in bondage tonight. He'll set you free. If you'd come to him, let's take a wee moment and bow in prayer tonight. If you're here this evening and God has been speaking to your heart, and you've, you've come to this meeting this evening, I want you to know the Lord is here. He wants you to come to him tonight. He wants you to have a life worth living. 
He wants you to be filled with joy. He wants you to be filled with peace. He wants you tonight to know life in all its fullness. Will you come to him tonight and make him yours? May God give you the saving grace tonight to do so. Lord, tonight, we thank thee for thy love. We thank thee for thy mercy. We thank thee for thy grace. We thank thee for thy salvation. And Lord, tonight, give the saving grace to some soul. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.